So, okay, I'll, I'll talk about, today I'll talk about magnetic buoyancy and stability in the analastic approximation. And I should say that this is work in close collaboration with uh, David Hughes and Evie Kersale. Um, so uh, in a layer of gas with a horizontal magnetic field that is increasing with depth, uh, the gas, the weight of the gas is supported by both gas pressure and magnetic pressure. And as such, uh, the gas can support more weight than it would be possible in the absence of the field. Uh, so this creates an excess potential energy, which can be uh, released through an instability mechanism that's known as magnetic buoyancy. And this mechanism is a primary candidate for the mechanism through which magnetic field escapes the solar interior and manifests on the solar surface in forms of coronal loops and sunspots and many other magnetic phenomena. So uh, magnetic buoyancy is uh, inherently a compressible phenomenon and as such its complete description is provided by equations of compressible MHT. But compressible equations contain sound waves which tend to be the fastest moving but not necessarily the most dynamically significant. So it's often useful to, to work with reduced systems that uh, filter sound waves and hone in on the uh, slower subsonic evolution. Uh, the two most uh, well-known approximations that do that are the analastic and the Boussinesque approximation. Uh, the analastic approximation is valid for atmospheres which are nearly adiabatically stratified, meaning that the vertical entropy gradient is small. And then one can obtain uh, governing equations known as the analastic equations for slow evolution of fluctuations on top of fixed hydrostatic background. And magnetic field can be included in the analastic approximation in a straightforward way, provided that the field is weak and more precisely that the square of an Alvin Mach number, which is uh, ratio of Alvin speed to sound speed squared is an order epsilon uh, quantity. Um, the Boussinesque approximation is based on the same ideas, but with the further restriction that the stratification is weak. Then including the magnetic field into the standard Boussinesque ap approximation, one op can obtain the equations of Boussinesque magnetoconvection, where the phenomenon of magnetic buoyancy is excluded. Um, incorporating uh, the effects of magnetic buoyancy in the Poussinesque approximation turns out to be a much more subtle pr procedure. Um, and one, one's follow through and you can obtain uh, equations of magneto Poussinesque system. And the subtlety lies in imposing an ordering on the length scale of the motions and in particular you have to assume that the land scale of fluctuation uh, in the direction of the imposed field is much longer than the transverse land scale of the or the depth uh, yeah, or the layer depth. So given that uh, all these subtleties are required to uh, include magnetic buoyancy in the Poussinesque approximation and the fact that not seemingly none of those special measures need to be taken to include, um, well, to, when, when including the field in the analastic approximation, one could ask whether the analastic approximation correctly represents the phenomenon of magnetic buoyancy. And such a question has been previously addressed in the study by Berkhoff and collaborators through numerical solutions of the linear diffusive analastic and compressible equations, um, where they actually found that under certain circumstances, there can be significant differences in the properties of the instability, even for atmospheres close to adiabatic stratification. So we will re revisit this question um, and uh, through a linear uh, stability analysis, comparing the uh, magnetic buoyancy instability in the fully compressible equations and to the ones uh, to the one in the analastic equations. Uh, and we will do that in the absence of a diffusion primarily 
because it allows us to write an analytic dispersion relation for a very special case. Um, so in the interest of full transparency, um, here are the uh, governing equations of the two systems. Um, and once they're suitably scaled, uh, two dimensionless parameters emerge. One is the uh, one is a lambda, which is a measure of stratification uh, of the atmosphere. And the other is this now scaled uh, Alvin Mach number, which uh, the important thing to remember is for the uh, validity of an elastic approach, this must be an on order one quantity. So we proceed in the usual fashion, seeking normal mode solutions, and, and we're interested in comparing the growth rates really. Um, so in, in that special case uh, for which we can write down the analytic dispersion is the case in which uh, the stratification or the atmosphere varies exponentially as such. And, and in that case, uh, both the sound speed and the Alvin speed are constant throughout the layer. And we can write down the dispersion uh, relation, which is here and it's full gory detail. You don't have to take it all in. The important um, point to, to take in is that the, uh, all the terms on the bottom line are pre-multiplied by epsilon, which is the departure from adiabaticity which is supposed to be small if, if we are to use the analytic approximation. And what turns out is actually when you set epsilon small here, then you get the dispersion relation for the analytic system, which is just this top line. So now by looking at this uh, expression, we can um, assess what are the conditions uh, so that there are uh, significant differences between the results of the analytic and compressible system. And with epsilon small, the only way uh, these terms in the, in the lower line contribute to the dominant balance is when either lambda or this Mach number are very large quantities. And it turns out that if either were true, that would be actually breaking the assumptions of the analytic approximation. So we you would be looking for agreement where you're not uh, permitted to. So what does that look like in practice? So here I plot the uh, solutions to that dispersion relation. I actually plot omega squared. The, blue, uh, the black solid lines are the uh, fully compressible uh, solutions and the uh, red dashed lines are the analytic solutions. So you can see that as long as this uh, Mach number is order one, you get good agreement between the two systems. And then as you, as the Mach number is increased, you, you leave the regime of validity of an elastic approximation and the agreement uh, well, and the differences between the two systems are large. So we've also looked at the case of more general atmospheres, ones in which uh, uh, both temperature and field vary linearly with depth. Um, and here again, uh, I'm showing the uh, growth rates of the instability um, for, against this Mach number for various field gradients with solid lines being the analytic solutions and the two dashed lines, uh, two kinds of dashed lines are the compressible solutions of different values of epsilon. And again, you can see that there is good agreement between the compressible and the analytic system so long, that, so long as epsilon is small, meaning we're, we're close to adiabatic, and this a scaled Mach number is order one quantity. Um, so exactly where you would expect uh, good agreement. Um, and I'm showing here uh, results for one specific thermal gradient, but in fact, the picture looks the same or similar for other field gradients. So all in all, um, so long as uh, we operate within the uh, assumptions of the analytic approximation, analytic MHD equations give a faithful representation of magnetic buoyancy instability. Question remains as to how much this picture 
will change when one includes diffusion, diffusion. But that's a story for another day. And for now, I'll just thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take questions. <laughs>